my name is Alex Maina. I live here in Akuru and I'm the founder of the Walk Center, which is now called the Walk Academy. This is a work that we started back in 2001 when I came to Nakuru. I came to Nakuru and I, I, one day I was walking along this, uh, in, the, in, this, uh, in this neighborhood and I discovered the dumping site. And at the dumping site, I saw so many young kids who were there scavenging together with their parents. And that really touched my heart so, so much. And uh, I thought of doing something for them. At that particular time, I was not even having a good job. I was just trying to make ex meet like so many other Kenyans do. So I started a program whereby I used to go there every week with 200 shillings, I would buy uh, for 100 loaves of bread, for 100 I would buy juice and I would call the children together and share bread and juice with them. That I did from the year 2000 to the year 2000, uh, 2001 to the year 2005. In 2005, I decided of opening a center for the children. So, still, with all my own financial struggles, but I tried to get, I, I think with the 2,000 shillings, I rented two small rooms just near the dumping site. And I called the kids there, and now they had an alternative place to come in the morning. Instead of them waking up and coming to the dumping site, you now they would come and stay with us. So we were there, me and my wife, and another young man called Christopher. So we were just there teaching them songs, some sports, and kind of teaching them some very informal uh, basic education. And then after 2005, that's when the idea of developing the, the center into a school came in. And we started now teaching them uh, like, a, like a school. Like a school, we started employing some teachers. And by then, uh, by the grace of God, I was able to, to start uh, a tour and travel company. And we started also receiving some volunteers from England who would come and also become kind of support staff in our institution. So we grew from there. What we do here, we give them free food, we give them free uniforms, free education. Everything they get here is free. That's, that's, that's the core that we feel that we have been called to impact our community. We have seen a lot of changes here. We have seen kids that, some kids we picked in 205, now they are working. They are now working class. Somewhere, one of them, he works in an NGO in Nairobi. After going through our system from the dumping site, to the university and now he is working in Nairobi. We have very positive stories. Definitely we have some kids who have dropped out of school, but we have very, very good stories of people we have picked from the dumping site and from the poor families. And now they are in high schools, others are in colleges, and they are doing very well uh, and they are going to change their community. The reason why we did education, because we thought, and I thought that maybe the best gift you can give to a family is educating their children. Maybe there is not much we could have done for the parents, so we thought of taking kids away from them and giving them a school, and through education, in the future, they may be able to help their family financially and otherwise. So here we are here every day. Uh, we, we also engage other things, not only education. We involve people like counselors. We involve people from the medical background to come and speak to the children. We also call parents once a month. We have a very big meeting here with parents where we give them food. We also call people to speak to them in relation of how to raise a good family. So a lot of activities here we are doing here. We also having, uh, we do a lot of sports. Uh, this year we, we started, uh, we went into acting, we have tried to do one, one small movie, uh, we call it Hadidiangu, which we also went for the movie competition and we got some trophy, so we, because we also want to bring out the talents that are in the children. So this is, uh, uh, this is the work we do here and it's so fulfilling to us. It is me here, we have about 15 members of staff together with my wife working on this dream. Um, through our business, we do support this, 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 this institution. 50% um, of the support comes from me and my family. We also have some friends, especially from England. We have a, we have a, we have a team there that gives us um, 2,000 £2, pounds every about. And they give us about 180,000 every month. That's the, that's the regular support that we get. Every other money uh, on top of that, me and my wife, we add on to the dream because it is our dream. It's okay. So, in the year 2005, when we started our first program, we had 45 children come from the dynamic side to our place. That is actually before we started feeding them. We just opened a place for them and 45 kids were coming every day. When we started the feeding program, three months after we opened up, the kids grew to 70 and the number has always been growing. We also go to the dumping site and we look for kids who are walking around, maybe not in school. And uh, we talk to their families, where are the kids not in school? 
So we, 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 we are living onto the community every other day looking for children. Right now, here in this institution, we have a population of 300 children who come here every morning for food and for education and for any other support, medical support, whatever support that they need, we are there to give to them and also to their families. In the neighboring school, we have, we have two, we have, we have 100 kids in the in a neighboring primary school because before we started our own, we used to take them to our neighboring school. We have also some, about 70 kids in high school, we have about five in college. So our population goes to around 500 kids and we are serving every other day in the institution. Uh, before I started the institution, I, I came. I came. I come from Central Kenya, and I came here to look for a job. Together with my wife, we came here to like to look for green pastures, and we really struggled here. We never got a job, but eventually we started working with children uh, in uh, in the slum areas as Sunday school teachers in a church in uh, Langa Langa, and we were there between between two, the year 2000 to 2005. Although we were not visiting the kids here in the dumping site, but during the day, we were working in a school uh, that is run by a church in called Philadelphia in, uh, at, in Langalanga here in Akuru. And I think also through that burden, being the city, we got a burden for, 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 for the children and seeing maybe how people are really suffering in the slums. And also personally, I really connect with the people who are suffering because even having come from the family that I come from, I come from a good family, a middle class family, my dad and my mother used to work for government, but in my teenage years, I ran away from home, and I found myself struggling living in Nairobi like a street kid. I have lived in some slums in Nairobi. I've been into drugs. I know, I know, I know the the life there. I know the struggle that people go through. I know the pain that that young people are in when you don't have food, when you don't have a place to sleep. So that also maybe makes us makes me connect a little with the needy people because surely uh, everyone has an assignment. I would say my assignment in life is for the needy people. That's what I believe is my calling. I was born in central Kenya in Ovaya in Nyeri, uh, in a middle class family. My mom and dad, my dad used to work for government, my mom used to be a teacher. And it's a, it's a relatively good family. I did my primary school in the village and I went to a boarding high school in the village. Actually, during my high school days, uh, when I was actually in Form 2, that's when I started going into drugs. Uh, smoking baggy, that was, the, that was the, the main drug that was being done then. And I literally got so much into it. It affected my education so, so much. It affected my relationship with my parents so, so much and my relationship with the community. I struggled through Form 2, Form 3 and Form 4, but eventually I did the exam. And uh, after the exam, I, I went to I went to Nairobi. My dad used to stay in Nairobi, and he took me to Kenya Polytechnic. But I was still into drugs, and and I was not able to go through. To even I think I was there only for one time. So and then I went into the street. Uh, together with I joined people who are not really good in society, and that's the kind of life I used to live: uh, brewing some alcohol, drinking, smoking weed that kind of life and doing every other negative thing that young people do and I did that for quite a number of years because I finished my class my form for in 1992 and uh, I transformed my life in 1999 so that's about uh, seven or so years of really really going deep into into that negative life so deep so 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 deep it really affected my life but uh, after 1999 I would say I saw the light, you know. I saw the light through accepting Jesus Christ and then I went back home. I was restored to my dad. I got married to Patricia and then we moved to Nakuru in the year 2000. And uh, after that, I've been able to take myself to school. I've, I've done a high diploma in psychological counseling. I've done a degree in theology because I'm also a minister in Deliverance Church. So basically, that's where, that's kind of a brief of my background. So my story is a story of great hope. Uh, maybe for someone who is struggling somewhere, there's a lot of hope. After being in all that negative life, I've seen God help me to do several good things. Like definitely I've started this with the work center here where we are helping so many kids. I've been able to write about five books that are really motivational books and also Christian books that have really transformed so many lives. Uh, we, do, we do inspirational programs in high schools and in colleges and in universities where we go and just talk to, to the people there on how they can improve their lives. So uh, we have done a lot of social transformation. I am also a minister with the Deliverance Church uh, in Kiamuni here in Nakuru. Uh, in Nakuru, by the, by the grace of God. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Welcome. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine.
fine? How was your night? Nice! How is the day? Nice! Thank you, you can take your seat. Thank you, sir! Social welfare, as they eat here, they have, they they interact with other children. Generally, it feels like a home for them. And education is really impactful for them and is effective, such that they can interact with the society well, and they have generally improved even in their lifestyle. My name is Felix. Doing a good job. Keep it up. Thank you. I'm doing fine. How is your day? Nice. How is your teacher? Nice. Thank you. You can take your seat. Hiyo 
kulikuwa tutu kwa hivyo tuku watu kama makao yote alikuwa anatupeanga unga kila siku unga kilo mbili mbili na tunatukaendelea kabisa hata saa hii kwa masomo kwa kila kitu hata chakula watoto wetu chakula ni huko wanapata hakuna kitu kingine chenye tunategemea lakini na masomo kitu ya mahana chenye nataka ni niseme huyu amerotoa mbali hata akitoka akianzisha shule alikuwa anaishi ploti ya matopeni pale chini lando na akakuja hiyo alikuwa anga tu kwa single room na ilikuwa nyumba ya matope haikukuwa nyumba ya mawe na siku hiyo bila alianzia hapo kwa hiyo nini akaanza kutembea huku akitafuta watoto vile watakula wakatafanya nini na siku hizo bila alikuwa anakuja huku akapata watoto na hakuwa na shule yote lakini akakomboa aka pale kwa mwenyewe na akatengeneza shule watoto wetu wakaanza kupata lanji pale wakapata mavazi kila kitu hata viatu hata kitu chenye tulikuwa tunataka kwa nyumba kutumia yeye ndiye alikuwa anatupea hakuna kitu kingine chenye tulikuwa tunataka tulikuwa tunataka watoto wasome